Hey guys, we come back to formula rearrangements for GCC and IGCC mass, and we go through several examples. Before in the previous video, we saw how to arrange in different cases, like in case of linear equation, in case of fractional one, in case of more complicated fractional one with the power. So if you're new here, just go back, try to watch because it's really short video, but very useful for many students. I hope to, so I decide to make it short in order to not waste lots of time, but just go straight to the point. All right. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe because you'll get more benefits than negative. All right. Let's go there. That's the first example. What are you going to do here? The equation of straight line is 2x plus 3y equals 3. You need to rearrange this formula into the gradient intercept form. So you remember that gradient intercept form should have this form mx plus c and you need also to sketch the graph stating x and y intercepts clearly. All right. So first of all, we need to rearrange. And what we have right now, we have a general form 2x plus 3y equals 3. So you just remember it's x plus by equals c. That's the general form or probably equals d, it doesn't matter how you call the coefficients. And which way you can rearrange so that to get y equals 2? So definitely you need to make your y as target variable. So which one you're going to express. So you've got 3y here, you transfer 2x to the right side and you left with 3y equals minus 2x plus 3. I intentionally use this structure, not 3 minus 2x, because I need to have gradient intercept and mx term goes the first one. So that term is the first and 3 coefficient is the second one. All right, what I'm going to do next, I'm going to divide by 3 everything. So the left hand side just will have only y and the right hand side will get negative 2 over 3x and plus 3 over 3 will give you 1. So I use partial division instead of writing um, I, I could write actually minus 2x plus 3 over 3, but you know, next step is to divide partially. It means you take the each term here on top and divide by 3. So that's how you can save your time. Let's move next. So I'm going to use Cartesian plane or x, y set and where I'm going to set up my line. All right. So which way I'm going to set up my line. There are several ways, but if I know this is C and this is basically Y intercept, I can use it from scratch. So I'll get one as one point immediately. So how to get the next point? Just plug any X value if you like but more convenient, of course, because you have a fraction negative 2 or 3, it's better to say that what if x equals 3? In this case, 3 and 3 will be cancelled, and according to the formula, you'll get negative 2 or 3 times 3 plus 1. You see what I, what I was saying about it. It's 3 and 3 cancel, and you've got minus 2 plus 1. That's basically substitution. Right now, you use the previous topic when you need to substitute Instead of variable, instead of x, you need to substitute some value. All right, so in this case, you plug 3. Hopefully, it's a good point. And always, you need to stick to the good strategy of substituting right units, okay, and right values. So, you'll get negative 2 plus 1. Finally, you'll get negative 1. Okay, so we've got negative 1 here. That's y coordinate and 3 for x. So, let's say 1, 2, and 3. That's our points, and we've got actual points right there. So now I'm going to use that marker and say that one point, that's another, and I can draw the line. So actually, right now, what I have, I use a state green one. It's perfect. So I have two points, so I can draw the line which goes through them. Unfortunately, we don't know this because the question asks us to find state x and y intercept. For y intercept, we already have one. So that's y intercept. And that's 
what stays here? It's negative one. Oops, sorry, why negative? It's positive one. All right, how to find X intercept? That's probably you need to look for it before when you need what actually you need to stay. You need to stay at X intercept. So X intercept is right there. In this case, Y is going to be zero. All right, so let's plug the value for Y equals zero instead of Y into the equation. So we've got the gradient intercept form right there. And we'll just simply plug Y equals zero. In this case, we'll get the right side for X. Negative two or three plus one. But here is the trick. In this case, it's not really convenient to find this point. So what you can do, you can plug right there because in this case, you don't have any fractions. That's your original equation and that's an equivalent to what you have. So instead of doing that, when you see the fraction, not convenience, just go to original form 2x plus 3y equals 1, sorry, 3, and just plug y equals, so y equals 0 right there. So you'll get 2x equals 3 from where x is going to be 3 over 2. And you immediately find that. Okay, in this case, x is going to be 3 over 2. And that what you were looking for. That's x intercept. So x intercept finally is 3 over t. 3 over t. And y intercept here is going to be 1. That can be seen from the equation in the gradient intercept form. Make sure you remember all those topics. If not, just visit my series of videos dedicated to straight lines. That's really deep exploration. So cover this several videos. You'll be all in straight lines. And that's definitely what you'll be needed in your first education for A level, for AB, doesn't matter, just after GCC. And of course, for your exams. Let's go to an example two. Right there, we have an equation and we need to make M as a subject in the formula. All right, so that's fractional one, okay? And then you need to calculate when A equals three and X equals 2.5, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm just going to rearrange him using the fractional equation A, yeah, better to put that style A, okay? That's your A over one equals to four X minus three M over M plus two. Next point, you have target variables in two places and that's not good because normally in, in, in order to make your subject m so you need to write m equals 2 but however before they they are separated so the first step here is to collect them how to collect first resolve this fractional one so transfer and crisscross way make sure you remember how to do this i show in previous videos so you just crisscross multiply an m plus 2 by a and one by that that's how you typically resolve. And immediately you expand in brackets. AM plus 2A will be equal to, one doesn't have any effect, so you just rewrite 4X minus 3M. 4X minus 3M, that what you have. Okay, so you've done that. Now you just simply use the idea how to solve linear equation with repeating variables. So that's repeating variables, so you need to combine all of them in one part. Okay, what are you going to do? You transfer negative 3m right there to the left hand side. And 2a you transfer there. So you swap them. Okay, you swap them. So what you've got, you've got am plus 3m will be equal to, you swap, that's why 4x minus 2a on the right side. Okay, next one. You factorize m from there and say, okay, we've got m a plus 3. Now we've got m as single variable and we actually separate it. Now my target value is here. So you multiply m by a plus 3. In this case, what are you going to do? You just take the right side like a huge block and divide by another huge block, which is here. You don't you know, you don't care about what's inside the brackets. You understand the general this block is the factor to m. How to find m? 
result divided by this factor. So that's why your final, okay, about right there. So your final m expression is going to be 4x minus 2a n over a plus 3. All right, we need to calculate m when a equals 3 and x equals 2.5. Let's do that. So we just plug the values using calculator. So first of all, I just write that x four times 2.5, I plug x 2.5 right there, and I subtract two times three. And then I divide it by a, which is three plus three in it. Okay, now you may take calculator. If not, you can do it probably mentally. I'll show you how to do it mentally. 4, point, 4 times 2.5, you'll get 10. 10 minus 2 times 3, you'll get 10 minus 6, it's 4. And then 3 plus 3 is 6. Now you've got a fraction 4 over 6 or 2 over 3. And now if you want, you can divide 2 over 3, but you know it's 0.66, okay? Repeat in fraction, okay? Oh, so final answer for m is going to be m equals 0.66, so repeat in fraction. And that's your final answer. So I put in red. Okay, and also your formula for m is also, also here. All right, so next one. Using the formula for the volume of cylinder with a radius, with the radius r in height h, make r as the subject in the formula. Okay, just I'll remind you, for a typical solids, no matter which shape you have on top and the same shape on the bottom, if you have area for the top as a and you have height, is basically how the top and the bottom part are separated by the, which distance. So the general formula for the volume is going to be, so formula for the volume is going to be A times H. That's for bodies or for 3D solids, which have the same bottom and the top parts. So basically top and the bottom parts. If you have cones, you just need to use coefficient one over three of the volume of upright body, like for the cone, yes? You take in the cylinder formula and take in one over three of that. That's for like this shape bodies, like cone, pyramids, and so on. That's pretty simple, interesting concept that I found, and that's basically what I encourage students to use. Instead of memorizing like <laughs> sheer volumes of formula for for volumes of each, for each body type, you know, for each solid type. So if you are not sure that this concept works universally, just check out my video about mensuration. So you'll find that topic very useful for you guys. Okay, so we come back to the problem. So using the formula for the volume of cylinder with radius r and height h, make r as the subject. Okay, so we've got a cylinder right there. That's the top and this, the bottom one, so we connect with lines, that's our cylinder, and we want to calculate the volume. So we know that according to this formula, area of the top or the bottom is pi r squared. That's simply the formula for the circle, okay? That's the area. And we simply need to multiply by height, which is h, okay? So that's the formula, by h, okay, that's by h, pi r squared times h, this is not x, this multiplication sign. Using this formula, we need to rearrange in order to make r as the subject. So we've got r squared here, so that's the target, it's right there. So what we're going to do, we just need to say that r squared is going to be v over ph. So first of all, r squared is going to be v over pH. And now how to get R? You just need to take the square root of both parts in order to get your R itself. So you're taking the square root of V over pH. And you understand that you don't take pi, pi and H over there. 
And you don't take negative sign because radius is the quantity which is more equal than zero. So radius is the length, so it cannot be negative. That's your target formula for your target variable. That's it, and that's the answer. Hope you like that. Don't forget to subscribe, guys. I really appreciate those who are staying with me for a long time because actually everyone who still subscribe actually know why he did it. That's for benefits and that's for tuning up, definitely. See you later.